To all my mortgage loan officers, I hear you and I see the message you've been sending over to me with regards to realtors. How do I influence a realtor to do business with me? How do I recruit realtors so that I'm their go-to lender? I want to be their loan officer. I want to be their preferred lender. Daniel, how do I do this? And so I'm going to answer you in this video and, uh, and I hope that it helps you because purchase is taking more precedence. It's taking up more market share than refinances now, right? And it's expected to climb because it's a purchase market, rates going up, so not too many people are refinancing anymore. Uh, but, you know, unless you know how to sell very well, your refinance game never even dipped, right? You'll, you'll get creative, you'll find ways to, to uh, sell refinances still. And if you need help on getting creative, you need help on increasing your refinance game and purchase just isn't for you, check out my channel, consider subscribing and look at the playlist that I put together. Um, a lot of it has to do with selling and, uh, and refinance is, is basically selling. Whereas purchase, it's a little bit different. You're not necess necessarily selling to the buyer. Who you're really, really selling to is the realtor. And I think that what we have to do is in order to find out how to get to where we wanna go, we need to know where we wanna go, right? And so if, for example, your goal was to get a realtor to do business with you, ultimately you have to reverse engineer it and then compare it to the strategies that you see around you. And I would start off with using the strategies of the top performers rather than the strategy of some new person because they're in the training class with you when you guys got boarded on and he told you nine stories about how he was the best loan officer since sliced bread with his last company, but you don't know him, you just have that bond from being in training with him. Consider this, if he was as good as he said, why is he in training? And if he's as good as he says, you know what I mean, why is he with a different shop? And sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, but just protect yourself before you venture in and put your time in using a strategy that does not, does not work, right? Or you're not sure if it will work. Save yourself some time and go with strategies that work. Now, with regards to myself, being in the industry for as long as I have, I've worked with a ton of uh, realtors, escrow companies, title companies, and these are the entities that play an outside role beyond the relationship you have with the realtor. And so, for example, newer agents in right now uh, sometimes don't understand the the pieces in place when it comes to you know when it comes to a, a purchase loan. And so there's more factors in, in comparison to if you're doing a refinance loan. Typically you're only talking to Mrs. and Mr., right? Whereas like a purchase, you're talking to the buyer's agent, the seller's agent, the escrow agent, the fucking title agent, the processor, your assistant, everyone in between. And everything's always you know on fire, right? So because it's a very time sensitive process. And so we have to, we already understand that part. I hope you do. And what we need to realize and show empathy towards is the realtor. The realtor is is typically they're like, they're like it's like they're self-employed. They don't really get a base. They might get a draw, but that's not you know a base or anything to rely on. If they get a draw, they're basically in debt. And uh, and a realtor fully relies on that sale closing because that's their income. They're, they don't get a salary if something falls out, much like most loan officers, where if they don't fund the deal, it's all right. You get another one, right? Well, a realtor sees far and few in between unless they're really established. And so the common method that I'm hearing is that loan officers, whether it's a call center or a field loan officer, their strategy is that they get the company card or they, worse yet, they even use their own card to buy you know, gifts or buy snacks or food or coffee for the broker shop, so the broker office. So like, let's say you find you know, ABC Realty that lives right down the street from you as, as the traditional loan officer would try to stop in and say, hey, you know what, I was actually just next door at Lucky's or fucking whatever grocery store is right next door, and then go in and say, hey, you know, I was just shopping next door, saw you guys in here, thought I'd introduce myself, and then make some small talk about what they do and try to build rapport, bond, and, and, and forget that that's actually what everyone else has been doing and is doing. And so what this means is that because it's been done before multiple, multiple times, not just from every loan officer within, this, <laughs> within the nine mile radius, but also every representative. So their title companies, their escrow companies are also fighting for their business. And the traditional method is to stop by, bring gifts and do all this schmoozing. But at the end of the day, 
that broker shop more than likely has a preferred lender. You have to expect this. You have to assume this. The only time that you shouldn't assume it is if the, you know, the per maybe the agent is brand new. How do you tell if they're new? Look at their license number. The higher the number, the newer they are. For example, uh, zero point. I'm sorry, zero one nine. If that's the way the the, the BRE license um, reads or starts as, then that tells you that's probably within the last five years, right? Whereas zero two zero, that's more a little bit more recent. So do your research on the license history because you're more likely to influence and win over a newer agent that's trying to, you know, earn their rank or, or get their business established, and they may be easier to influence versus someone who's been in the game for ten years and has their their engine set up. Although you can still get that person and win them over, you know, you want to you want to start creating momentum and sometimes you just need to, to see it moving and so know where you're focusing your time know what you have up against you know what the common objections are but more importantly know what the common strategy is and sometimes dropping by and giving gifts ain't doing nothing but but ringing up your bill instead an alternative way would be find out where the open houses are stop by the open house with some snacks with some refreshments with some drinks Stop by with your card and some, you know, some branding items that that's going to remind them that you're the one who dropped that that off, and and deliver it to them individually, not as an office, right? Because as an office, it's almost like it, it's just it's a different environment. Whereas that realtor, if they're doing an open house and you stop by with with some snacks, you know, and you you did some research on the realtor first. You didn't just come in with like potato chips and didn't know that the fucking realtor does you know, works out six times a week, they're not gonna relate with that. But if you did research, well, how do you do research, Daniel? Easy, you find out the name, you look them up on LinkedIn, look them up on social media, see what kind of posts they have, see what kind of posts that they participate in. If they're blocked or they're locked, then look at their LinkedIn, see who they follow, see what their last posts were, and get in line with their mindset, right? And so if you find out that Jim the Realtor likes to do CrossFit every single day. I wouldn't come by with a bag of chips. I would come by with something from Trader Joe's, right? Or something from, you know, Sprouts, like maybe a, a, um, a healthy snack. Something that he will definitely take and definitely enjoy. Or she would definitely take or she would definitely enjoy. And it, it's just a matter of taking the time, right? But the easier route is just stopping by and say, hey, I was at a grocery store next door. I thought I'd stop by. By the way, I'm a loan officer. And I know you have your set ways, but I'd like to earn your business. So think about that. It's an alternative and it's just a different way to approach. Not too many loan officers are doing that. And, uh, and you want to be able to focus in and create bond per agent, not per broker shop, per agent. And you can find out details about the agents on a broker shop. So again, if I found ABC Realty works right down the street or they're down the street from my house, I can look up the website of that broker shop and find out all the listed agents and then I can do my research on them. You know, you want to do your 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 uh, recon before you go into battle, right? So you want to be able to at least look at what you're up against, figure out what kind of objections you'll have like, oh, we already have our preferred lender. And so where a lot of other, other uh, loan officers will come in and say, hey man, I want to be your preferred lender, you're going straight for the gusto. They don't even know you. They don't even know your name, probably don't know your company. And so an alternative way, instead of, you know, how do, how do I say, hey, send me some business, an alternative way is get creative and say, hey, you know what, let me work with your turndowns. And then bring up a story that you've heard. I'm sure we all have a story within our atmosphere of that one loan that we closed in 14 days. The people were living in the Motel 6, calling nonstop, and we delivered, right? Or you, your company delivered. Think of that story and use that story often and perfect it. Because you want to want to explain to them, because a realtor is so tied to the closing of that sale, you're going to want to want them to know that that you are able to do hard to do products or hard to do programs, you know, and, and instead of looking at it as a turn down, if their preferred lender cannot entertain that loan, then you become the alternative, right? And so they, they now have a use for you and they're motivated to use you because you can do something that their current vendor cannot do or their current uh, preferred lender cannot do. And that's just an easier way of saying, hey, I'm, I'm in the game, you know, I understand and I respect your relationship with your preferred lender, but let me, you know, let me, let me take a peek at the things that they can't touch. I'm, I'm, I think I can help you that way. And, uh, and that's just another method. Of course, you want to be with a company that has, you know, a pretty wide range of products unless you're a specific niche, you know, niche 
a lender, like hard money lender or whatnot, and you're, then you're probably dealing with high luxury sale uh, prices, right? Like a million plus or two million plus. Whereas if you're dealing with just a normal suburban neighborhood and you could be dealing with a lot of people who are just W-2 employees and, and it's an up and coming area, you wanna get creative. And, and that's one way to get creative is just be an outlet for the deals that the preferred lender can do. And in the process, you know, farm that relationship, relationship, keep them as a contact. Don't hound them like a fucking recruiter on LinkedIn. You know, deliver them true value. If you see them around, stop by. You know, if you notice that they got an open house going on in the area, you know, shoot them over a message, not every day, but just shoot them over a message and say, hey man, I'm actually working with a borrower in your area. You know, if they're interested, or a buyer in your area, if they're interested in, in the property type, I'll shoot them over the, your contact information. You know, and, and you want to deliver, right? So hopefully if you're going to use that tactic, you actually do have someone to refer over. But these are just different methods, different different techniques that you can consider when approaching loan, or I'm sorry, realtors. As a loan officer, not too many are approaching realtors with a branding uh, motive, right? Like I would, I would seriously consider social media, creating a page of social media where you can assist with your branding efforts. You can do a post. This is the same reason why celebrities get paid um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do one post is because their audience and so if you created a page where you're teaching first-time home buyer programs or or you know certain programs where people can put minimal down payment or real estate investing whatever and you created an audience that is in line with what your realtors audience is then you can collaborate and you can you can you can co-brand um, certain posts right and and assist with getting the the attention that's needed so you know there's more ways that I'm, I'm gonna think of I'm gonna put more into action because I, I see the the the, sh the market share that purchase loans are taking and I see a lot of loan officers just simply unequipped they're not prepared to take on purchase loans because it's viewed as a grind and typically those are the loan officers who are frustrated right now because they're mad that the purchase agents are making more money than them and this is what you know because it's been in, in in rumor for so long over the last couple of years it's going to be a purchase market it's going to be a purchase market well now it is it's relevant and purchase is going to account for half your pipeline so unless you want to take a you know a pay cut of 50 percent you got to be prepared to expand your horizon and, and be able to entertain that type of product if that product is in demand it'll make it, it make life much easier your income won't dip and you won't be you know fighting reality and the reality is that that you need to foster purchase relationships through realtors title escrow companies bar buyers that 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 all comes and goes right but who you need to really foster a relationship with is a realtor and well how do I do that and I'm going to show you how stay tuned on sales remastered consider subscribing hit hit the comments hit the like um, let me know if this video has helped you let me know if uh, you're currently using these strategies and how it's working for you or what strategies you've used that you've seen favorable results on leave the notes below so the community can see and uh, I'll see you in the next video bye